Good morning. I'm uh, Matt Ingmarsson. One, I'm one of the founding members of Rotary Global History Fellowship, and I'm speaking to you from New York. And <clears throat> this is the first time I'm uh, speaking uh, through YouTube, so I'm getting used to the media, and uh, it's a new experience for me. So different from speaking in front of an audience. So, um, but uh, I took on this engagement because I thought it would be a very interesting challenge. It's a little odd to see myself in a picture at the same time as I'm speaking, so I kind of <laughs> have to get used to it. Uh, the subject today that I was asked to speak about is uh, Rotary and the United Nations and Rotary and UN Day. Every year, and the first week of November, uh, typically, uh, Rotary celebrates its UN Day, and that means that the leadership of Rotary International uh, gets together with uh, uh, Rotarians in New York and also from around the world to uh, uh, discuss its relationship with the United Nations, and uh, we do that together with the leadership of uh, the United Nations. I probably should be looking up into the camera rather than looking at myself on the picture because as you can see that I'm looking down here. So anyway, that's uh, how uh, uh, Rotary UN Day ca came about. Now, the relationship with uh, the United Nations uh, goes back quite a while. In fact, uh, you may not know, but Rotary was one of the uh, founders of the United Nations. And uh, what it started basically with uh, in 1943 when uh, Rotary sponsored a conference, and I'm reading here from my manuscript, a conference in London in November 1943 with ministers and observers from 21 governments. That group later began laying plans for what became UNESCO. And uh, Rotary was also involved in 1945 when uh, the, um, they had the charter meeting. And there were 49 Rotarians at that meeting that represented their own governments. And also 12 prominent Rotarians were uh, asked by the U.S. government to form a committee and, uh, and basically effect the charter of the United Nations. And uh, the Secretary of State at the time, Edward Stettinius Jr., uh, in 1945 wrote, and I'm uh, reading here, here is my manuscript, by the way, <laughs> uh, the invitation to Rotary International to participate in the United Nations Conference is uh, as, sort of as consultants to the United States delegation was not merely a gesture of goodwill and respect towards a great organization. It was a simple recognition of the practical part Rotary's members have played and will continue to play in the development of, uh, of understanding among nations. The representatives of Rotary were needed at San Francisco, and as you well know, they made a considerable contribution to the charter itself and particularly to the framing of the provision of the Economic and Social Council. Rotary's founder, Paul Harris, <coughs> actually uh, was uh, thinking about uh, the uh, United Nations uh, after the League of Nations had collapsed, which then resulted in the Second World War. I, when I was chairman of Rotary Global History Fellowship, which was from 2004 till 2006, uh, that was during Rotary Centennial, uh, and that was uh, which took place in 2005. And during the Rotary uh, convention in Chicago, we had a booth there, and uh, a retired professor, Rubina Leach, came in the booth and told me that she knew Paul Harris uh, when she was a 12-year-old girl. Uh, her, she grew up in northern Michigan, and Paul and Jean uh, used to rent a summer cottage there in the summer when it uh, got too hot to stay in Chicago. 
and she told me that uh, her father um, and had invited Paul and Jean to have dinner with them, and they usually did, and her fa uh, Paul Harris tried to convince her father to join Rotary, but he was never successful. But uh, Rubina told me, little did he know that he convinced me. So when uh, uh, Rotary finally accepted women and, and her local Rotary club, uh, then she joined, and uh, which was in 1990. So I asked her if she ever spoke to Paul Harris uh, uh, privately, and she said, yes, she did. She asked uh, Paul uh, what he thought about the World War. This was in 1942, and uh, he said that it's terrible, and I hope it will... Uh, it will uh, end soon so we can bring Rotary back into Germany, Italy, and Japan. And uh, uh, and uh, I suspected already then that after that that uh, Paul Harris had played an important role in uh, the forming of the United Nations. Uh, Rotary was not the only sponsor, of course, the U.S. government, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, Eleanor Roosevelt, and a lot of other also uh, of like-minded, but it's very interesting uh, that uh, we have discovered a radio interview with Paul Harris in 1946, which was uh, about uh, one year before he died, and he said there, <coughs> there is a decided parallel between Rotary and the United Nations organization. It is my hope that in their deliberations, the United Nations will follow Rotary's cue and approach each other with kindly considerations instead of with fear, distrust, and hatred. It is true that the way to war is a well-paved highway and that the way to peace is still a wilderness. But have the United Nations undertaken the impossible? I maintain they have not. My 41 years of promoting understanding and goodwill in the ranks of Rotary gave me the, gave me the courage to insist that the plan of the United Nations is not an idle dream. It is practical, and that given half a chance, it will succeed. Now, in 1946, the United Nations was only one year old, so it was, uh, it was not given maybe a big chance of success. Now the United Nations, uh, it was formed in 1945, so by, it's almost, uh, it's more than 75 years old now. And so we know, we, we take United Nations for granted. But the reality is that, uh, and Rotary is a bigger organization than the United Nations. We are 1.2 million Rotarians around the world, and we're in 200 different countries. So we're actually more countries than the United Nations. The United Nations may be, I don't know if they 75,000 people worldwide, but I know that uh, the former Secretary General of the United Nations, um, Kofi Annan, told uh, Rotary, uh, alternate representative uh, that uh, Rotary is a much bigger organization than the United Nations. And, um, and uh, the United Nations have relied on Rotary a lot. Paul Duplass is an example of that, of a cooperation between Rotary and the United Nations. There, are also, uh, there have also been uh, uh, peace negotiations uh, between Rotarians in different countries. Uh, very quietly, but very effective, for example, between India and Pakistan, or between Chile and Argentina, or between Northern Cyprus and Greek, Greek Cyprus. And now that we have a Rotary Club in Jerusalem with 50% uh, Palestinians and 50% Israelis, and we have a Rotary Club in Ramallah that was uh, sponsored by a Rotary Club in, in Jordan and one in Israel, uh, I would imagine that Rotary is playing an important role in in uh, uh, maintaining uh, some kind of peace in the in 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 the Middle East or in uh, between the Palestinians and the Israelis. 
because Rotarians have always been uh, uh, committed to peace. And of course, uh, the theme this year, peace through service, I think is a very good theme for Rotary, and it uh, illustrates what Rotary has always stand for. For uh, Paul Harris always talked about that Rotary stood for tolerance and understanding, and uh, of course uh, we we did not uh, bar anybody from joining Rotary because of race, religion, and nationality. The Rotary has always been open and uh, and to promote understanding. So I have spoken for almost 11 minutes. I can see the clock here. And uh, maybe I should uh, finish my speech uh, here. And, um, and then um, I will participate in your meeting and basically um, uh, be available for questions. Uh, thank you very much.